Testing, testing. Well, all right. Good morning, Harbor View Primary. So my name is Auntie Alexis, and I am the Education and Outreach Officer here at National Museum Jamaica. Thank you guys so much for coming, and we appreciate the teachers for making the effort. I know you guys have a lot going on, and um, we know that there were some issues getting here. So again, big up on yourself, and we hope you guys really learn, pay attention, make notes, all right? So, and we are also live streaming, so anybody who is there on YouTube, hello and welcome to the Institute of Jamaica. So, um, again, apologies for the late start. I will now bring up Miss Stephanie Rose, aka Auntie Stephanie, who is going to introduce us to our amazing lecturer today. So, everyone, welcome Auntie Stephanie. Thank you, Alexis. Um, before I present our presenter today, I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Jeremy Lee. He's in the back there. He's a representative from the Jamaica Information Service, JIS. And thank you, Jeremy, for making it here today. Thank you very much. Give him a clap. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to uh, present our speaker today, our presenter. She's very familiar to you, right? Her name is Saskia Lee. And if you didn't know anything about um, her, well, you're gonna be hearing a little bit more about your teacher today, all right? So she's, she's a student-focused educational professional with over two decades. Who know how many years is that? Uh, what a bright man, 20 years <laughs> of demonstrated experience working with children, helping them to learn and achieve academic success. The skills she has gained and the education she has received have helped her to deliver her lessons well. She possesses a huge passion for teaching mathematics. It is a subject, as she calls, she says, it's a subject I feel entirely confident in, and this is reflected in her ability to teach in a simple yet highly effective manner to cater for students of all standards and abilities. Outside of teaching face-to-face -face classes, she also does online mathematics tutoring. And as I quote, she says, I possess strong teaching skills, and I have an excellent knowledge of the mathematics content. I believe mathematics is a hands-on subject that must be taught and practiced every day. It's not all about getting a problem correct, as she says, it's about understanding the problem. Well said, Saskia, let's give her a round of applause and welcome her on stage. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Miss Lee. And how are we feeling today? I thank you, and how are you? Okay, I am awesome. All right, we're going to get right into the presentation. I hope we are ready for the mathematics. Are we ready? Yes, Miss. If you're ready, let me hear you say ready. Ready. Awesome. All right, so I did say good morning to you all. I want to welcome you to the annual PEP lecture. And the subject we're doing today is mathematics, as you already know. Now, to get us started, I would like to have a baker's dozen of students on my stage. A baker's dozen. But before you come, I want to ask someone, what is a baker's dozen? All right, let me take this one right here. 13. Wonderful. So I need to get a baker's dozen students on stage right now. Take your time and make your way. 
Take your time and make your way. All right, just come to the front. Let us see if Eleanor Bakers does this. Go straight across, straight across. All right, do we have 13 yet? How many more do we need? All right, five more persons, come quickly. Five more, come quickly. All right. You can put your sweater down, please, thank you. All right. Do we have, do we have a baker's dozen now? All right. Wonderful. Now, your task today is just to tell me the items, the names of the items on the screen. So as you say one, the first one, you just say it and then you take a gift from my box right here and then you will take your seat. You see gifts going out very early. I like to give early gifts. All right, so the first person can go. What's the first thing up there, up top first? Say it loud so they can hear. A triangle. What did she say? A triangle. A triangle. In my box, there are some things. Take one item. Yeah, man, items are there. Quickly. Take an item. All right. Next person. What's the next shape there? Anyone can go quickly. All right, go ahead. Square. She said a square. Is it a square? What is it? It's a parallelogram. Yes? All right, we get parallelogram. We can take that one. All right, parallelogram. All right, take a gift from my box there. All right. Next person. Quickly. Say it loud so they can hear you. She said, ah? Uh, didn't hear you. Pentagon. Take a gift from my box. Quickly. Next person. Yes, I think I have a baker's dozen items there. All right, next person. Quickly. Can we help him? Look at the fourth one. Can we help him? Can we count the sides and see? How many sides do you see? Yes? I heard six. So what kind of shape has six sides? Hexagon. Yes, I heard it. Hexagon. A hexagon in the back. Come and take a gift and take a seat. At the back I heard first. Quickly. All right. All right, that's okay. I have a prize for you too. You can take a seat now. Next one. All right, yes, what's that? Um, a spear. He said a spear. What do you think it is? Yes? We can work with that. Or right, you can take a prize and you can go. All right. Yeah, more things are there. Okay, wonderful. Next one in the corner. A cube, or we'll take that, or a cuboid, wonderful. Give some hands for the students who volunteered, give them some hands. All right, more things are there, more things are there. No, not this, not this, things are there. Sanitizers, are you All right, now we're at the bottom. Let's see if we know the signs at the bottom. Go quickly, the first one. Addition sign, is he correct? Yes. All right, take something from the box. Next one quickly. Subtraction sign. All right, take something and take a seat. Next one. Multiplication sign. Multiplication, all right. Go right ahead. A division. Before the division, there's something is not so clear. Can we see it? Those are brackets. All right, division sign, take something. And the next one there. And the last one. I heard equal. The last one is what type of sign? Not equal, Not equal sign. Wonderful. Give our baker's dozen a hand, please. All right. Wonderful. All right, so we're going to get right into it. Now, mathematics have some strands. 
are some different, different type of areas. Many areas in maths. So we're going to be finding out the areas if we don't already know them. So I am going to give you some sentence, and you're going to tell me which area of maths am I referring to. Are we ready? All right. So let me tell you the areas. Now we have numbers. All right. Next one we have. See if you can call the words for me. The next one is? Measurement. measurement. The next one is? The next one? Geometry. And the last one? Let me see if you can call the names here. Statistic and? All right. So I'm going to be giving you some sentences now, and you're going to call either of those words. Are we clear? All right. I woke up this morning at 3 a.m., and it took me about two hours to get here. Which one of the strands? Yes? Measurement. measurement. And which aspect of measurement are we dealing with? Time. Wonderful. Listen to my next question, or statement, sorry. I am going to walk to the bus stop. I'm wondering what I'm going to be taking. A bus, a taxi, or am I bigger riding a bicycle? Yes? Wonderful, probability is correct. Awesome. Listen to this one now. In my pocket, I have $200. I want to give a student some, but I must take home about $45 back home to my mother. Numbers. Numbers. It can be something else. Algebra. It is? Algebra. Algebra. All right. One more before we move on. One more before I move on. This room has about... 70 students in the room. Yes? Numbers. Numbers. Awesome. Awesome. So we know exactly what mathematics is. Let's move on to a definition for mathematics. And what I want to focus on is just the sentence I lighted. Let's read that for me, please. One more time. Do we believe that? Yes, miss. If I say to you, how many persons are beside you? Isn't that maths? Yes, miss. If I say, what size do you wear? Isn't that mathematics? Yes, miss. If I ask you, how many is your hair um, cornrow in? Is that maths? Yes, miss. How many pencils do you have? Yes, how long did it take you to get here? Yes, miss. How many money? How many? Money do you have with you currently? Yes? So do we understand that mathematics is everything? Let's say that sentence. Mathematics is everything. Everything is mathematics. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? Okay, wonderful. All right. We are moving quite along. All right, so mathematics focus on two main things. One of them is problem solving or to solve problems. And the other one is to find a solution. Find a solution. Once we have those in mind, then maths will be so simple. Raise your hand for me, those who have maths as their favorite subjects. Favorite subjects. Some hands are not up. So that means you should bring no money to come to school today. Yes? You should wear no shoes. Yeah? You should have no money in your pocket then because your hand is not up. All right, arms down. All right, so our main focus today is for us to get an understanding and to get an appreciation of mathematics.
All right, so when we're through here, you will be able to answer multiple choice questions more effectively. You also will be able to master your decimal and your fraction. Any question you get about decimal or fraction, you should be able to maneuver and to manage those areas. All right, so we're going to be playing a little song for you. To get ourselves ready. And this song is to the tune of Bits of Paper. It will come shortly. The next slide will be the song you'll see shortly. All right, it's coming up. The next one. In the meantime, okay, it's right there. So we'll be singing along with it. All right, it's not playing, so we can just sing it. Let me sing it first for you. Oh, it's math time, oh, it's math time. Come and join, come and join. Critical thinking, problem solving. I love them all, love them all. Your turn now. Love them all. I love them all. Wonderful. So now we have on our thinking caps and we are going to be thinking. All right? So we're going to start with fractions. All right. So we're going to run through quickly because everyone here knows exactly what a fraction is. And we know the types of fractions. All right. So do we know how to change an improper fraction to a mixed number? Yes, please. Tell me that, what do we do? Which operation do we use? Operation? Yes. We divide. All right, we're not going to spend no more time on this because it's very simple. All right, how do we change a mixed number into a improper fraction? Which operation? Multiplication and, and addition. We just want to make sure we understand the concept because mathematics is all about understanding. Let me hear you say understanding. Understanding. Wonderful. All right, equivalent fractions. Do we know how to find the equivalent fraction? I need the easy way to find the equivalent fraction. How do we do it? Double the fraction. Anybody else? Yeah. Triple the fraction. All right. Wonderful. And it goes on and on and on. All right, so we already talked about this one here. And we talked about this one, how to have it done. All right, so we're moving right along to, oh, we just did equivalent. So we know exactly how to do equivalent fraction, how we double the fraction, or we can triple it, multiplying by two, all the counting numbers to get our next equivalent fraction. All right, we're moving. I heard a question? Yes. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much for that. All right. So he's telling us to make sure that we multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same number. All right. We're going to be moving on because what we want to do today is to learn how to apply all the things we did in fraction to answer questions on the past papers. 
or when you get the exam to do, we'll be able to apply ourselves and to answer the questions. So what we are doing now is just the preliminary. All right. So we are going right ahead. Uh, All right, so as I was saying before, the curriculum base test that will be coming up for the grade six students, what they will be getting is just a test paper to see how to assess what they have learned. So in fractions, we have many different topics, and for you to be able to pass the exam, you need to be able to understand everything first and then to know how to apply yourself when you're doing the exam itself. All right, so equivalent fraction is one of such that you need to know how to do in order to answer the questions on the exam paper. And I always tell my students, once you understand what you're doing, doesn't matter the math you get, you'll be able to get it correct once you understand what they're asking you about. All right, so we're moving on from equivalent fraction All right, now we're going to move on to simplifying. Now, when you're simplifying, as the student said earlier, we do the same thing to the numerator and also to the denominator. So when we're simplifying, we're also doing what? Anyone knows the name? Reducing. We're also reducing. So is the fraction going to get larger or smaller? Smaller. smaller. I need to hear from this side as well. I see we are writing. All right. All right, so here I'm showing you a nice example here. If you have a cake, and it's got up in four eighths, the same cake, if you divide that by two, you will get two quarters, and if you further divide it by two, you will get a half. So that's it for equivalent fraction, and it shows you also how to do reducing. All right, we're gonna get to some questions and then I would like you to tell me which area of the fraction is in that question. All right, we're moving right along. All right, here we are now at comparing fraction. Yes, we did went through simplifying just so that we can divide as well to make the fraction smaller. Are we clear with this one here? Yes. Not hearing from you? Yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, so we're going right ahead to comparing fractions. All right, we can also use a pictorial representation to draw our fractions just so, to show the equivalence that will help us to compare to see the bigger fraction different from the smaller fraction. All right, we're moving right along. All right, these here are just some examples of how you would work your maths to simplify, to reduce, also to compare using greater than, less than, or equal to. So moving right along, just showing you the different areas of fraction which I am sure that you are aware of. And the same will go for ordering. When you're ordering the fractions, you do the same thing. 
Let them have a like denominator, and then you can know the smallest different from the largest, or the largest different from the smallest. All right, so we're moving right along. Okay, and it says here to compare a fraction, we can draw a picture or use the butterfly method. Do we know this method? Anyone knows it? I hear some yes. Anyone knows the butterfly method? All right, let me see if I can get to a question that shows us the butterfly method. All right, the butterfly method is like using an X. All right, so we know the butterfly have wings, right? All right, so from one wing on your left, and there's another wing on your right. So what we do, we will multiply the fraction diagonally. Oh, it's right here. So we have three threes give you nine, and we have five twos, ten. Ten or nine, which one is bigger? Ten. And so we know that the fraction on the right is the bigger fraction. This is the butterfly method. Let me go over it again. This is the easy way for you to compare your fractions. So we have three at the top and three at the bottom. What is three times three? Nine. Nine. And then we have five on one side and two. What is five times two? Ten. All right. Ten or nine. Which one is smaller? Nine. Okay. And so the multiple of our sign will turn to the bigger number. All right. So I think we are through with all the areas of fraction. Yes, I think we are through with all the areas of fraction. Now, adding fractions. When we're adding fractions, we need to make sure that our denominators are the same. Once they are the same, we can go right ahead and add the not here and you. Once our denominators are the same, what do we do with our numerators? We add our numerators. And the same thing goes for subtraction. You have to make sure your denominators are the same. Can someone tell me, if they are not the same, what would we do? I'm seeing some hands and we want to use the mics. All right, one person come. One person, you can go to the mic in the center here. Yes, so we're adding our fractions. We find the LCM. We find the LCM. Those are some big things there now. What is the LCM? All right. Some persons may say LCD. What does LCD stands for? Lowest common denominators. And we know how to find that, right? We can use the multiple method by finding the multiples of the numbers at the bottom. And then we multiply the top by the number. And once we get our new fraction, then we can go ahead, write back our denominators, and we can add or subtract our numerators. All right, we're moving on from addition. I think we grab the addition concept. All right, we have step one here, which is showing us how to do the LCM. Can we move to the LCM part of the presentation? Oh, yes, it's right here. All right, so here we have the LCM, and they're using the multiple method to find the multiples. And when you get the common multiple, then you can go ahead and multiply your numerator and be able to get your fraction before you add or subtract. You must add your fractions only when you have the denominators being the same. Then you can go ahead and add your numerators. All right? I want to hear from someone now. Joshua, let me hear you. Tell me something about the addition of fractions. Come to the mic, Joshua. I see you are eager to say something. When you're adding fractions, sometimes, sometimes 
sometimes you may be able to reduce it. And after you reduce it, sometimes you also cannot reduce it because it may have an... Im All right, Joshua. Thank you. We get what you're saying. So what he's saying is applying what he have learned before. So while you're adding and you get a big number, if it can be reduced and get smaller, you will get the number smaller to its lowest term. And that is why we do reducing and simplifying. All right, so we're moving right along past the addition. Yes, we're going right along. All right, I think we can pass the addition here. And the same thing goes when you're adding with mixed numbers. When you have a mixed number and you're adding, how do you treat the whole numbers? Anyone on this side? If you're adding and you have whole numbers, you have mixed numbers in your fraction. How would you treat with the whole numbers? Anyone? For addition and subtraction. Let me hear this. You can go to the mic. We add the holes first. Okay, wonderful. She's saying that we add the holes first. All right? Or we can subtract the holes first, and then you go ahead and work your problem, whether it be addition or subtraction. All right, the last area in the fraction that we're going to go through before the questions is multiplication. And we all know how to multiply a fraction, right? All right, let's go to step one of the fraction. All right, here we have an example of a fraction. So what do we do to get this one? We multiply our numerators. Are we seeing that? Yes. This is a simple example. And then we multiply our denominator. What's the answer for this fraction here? The answer is? 3 8. Can this fraction be reduced? Okay, so that means this fraction is already in its lowest term. All right, we're moving right along. All right, what would the answer be for this one here? Yes? All right. I like that you say 418. Now, for this fraction here, can 418 be reduced? What can 418 be reduced by? Yes? Can be reduced by 2. All right. One thing to note, before you multiply across, because you might get some big numbers, and it's hard to multiply, we're going to try to reduce a fraction before we multiply going across. And do we know which way we reduce? Which way? Which two numbers can we reduce? Can we reduce two numerators? No? It has to be a numerator and a denominator. So look for me on this fraction here. Which two numbers are on the same timetable? Yes? Two and four, they are on the same timetable. So which number can we use to reduce two and four? Two. two. And once we reduce it and we multiply going across, our answer would be, let me see who is thinking. Let me see who is thinking. Our answer would be? Two. Two? Two, nine. Wonderful. I have some prizes for those persons who are answering questions, you know. I have more prizes. All right. Moving right along. All right, we're going to go straight ahead into a little game, and that's a XOX. All right, I'm going to be giving you some papers for this one, and I want to see who will be the winner of this game. All right, so does 
put some lines on your paper. Some of please put some lines on your paper. Give up these some of please. Come one to the other side. One to each person. All right, quickly. Let's draw. Two lines down, two lines across. Quickly. Quickly. Yes, one person, one paper for each person. Thank you. All right, some persons are ready. So in total, how many spaces are you going to have? Or how many boxes? Nine. Nine. All right. Some persons are ready. Only nine. Only nine spaces. Three, three, then three. Yes, give them all, pass them all quickly. All right. Some persons have more than nine. We only need nine spaces. Just nine spaces. Nine spaces. All right. I can see nine spaces. All right, so since we just covered the areas of fraction, what you're going to do for me now, in your nine spaces, you're going to be writing down some simple fractions. Listen carefully. Some simple fractions. Simple fractions that are in their lowest term. So the fractions are already in their lowest term. So you cannot write, you cannot write 50 hundredth. That is not in its lowest term. You cannot write 6 ninth. That's not in its lowest term. Tell me something you can write. A fraction in, in its lowest term. Oh, so we say a half. Something you can write. One third, yes? A quarter. Something else? Say it again. Four eleven. I need some fractions in its lowest term. Please don't pass ten with your denominators. So you must have nine fractions, simple fractions. Don't pass 10 in your denominators. And the numerators, don't pass 9. So let's make up some fractions. All right, we are ready to go now. We are assessing ourselves now with the fraction to see if there's anything that we grasp from the presentation or something that you knew before. All right, persons are ready. Do you have nine fractions now? No. All right, one more minute. Nine fractions. So one in each, each box. A fraction in each box. Wonderful. So put nine fractions there, one in each of the spaces. One. So you have three, then three, then you have three. We're assessing ourselves now. Remember, the denominator must not pass ten. I see a hand around the back. No, no mixed numbers. Sorry, only proper fractions. Proper fractions only. All right, I'm going to give you the clues now. And once you have the answer to the fraction, you will circle it. Or whatever you want to do, put an X over it. We want to see who will have their first line. So your denominators must not pass 10, remember? And the numerators must not pass nine. Once you have it correct, you just say bingo. All right. So the first clue, reduce 10, 15. 
See if you have that answer. Reduce 10, 15. Don't give me the answer yet, you know. If you have it, just circle it. When you reduce 10, 15. Or we can say 10 over 15, but it's really 10, 15. Anyone had that fraction in their box? No one had it? You had it? Miss Kenny, check if it's correct, please. He said he has that one. 10, 15, reduce. It's not there. All right. You had that fraction on your, on your paper? When you reduce 10, 15? All right, Joshua has it. Okay. Let's, let's move on. When we find the reciprocal of three. So three is a whole number, and you're finding the reciprocal. Do we know reciprocal? Or when the fraction is turned the other way. We call it upside down. It's turned the other way. So three, and you're finding the reciprocal. Do you have it on your paper, anybody? Anybody had it? You have it on your paper? Let me see it quickly. The reciprocal of three. Yes, it's right here. So circle it. Yes, she has it. She has the reciprocal of three, the whole number of three. All right, hear this one now. You're going to add for me seven eighths. Plus a half. Check if you have the answer for that. Seven, eight plus half. Add that fraction for me now. Sorry, subtract the fraction and see if you have the answer. Seven, eight. You're taking out a half. Let me see yours if it's correct. Seven, eight, and you're taking out a half. Yes, subtract a half from that. Yes, anybody have the answer? Let me see yours. Say it again. Seven, eight, and you're taking out a half. Let me see yours, if it's correct. Remember, your fraction must be reduced in the lowest term. Yes, anybody have that one? All right, two more, and then I'm going to check to see if anybody has anything in a straight line. Yes? All right. Okay. All right, one more reciprocal. The reciprocal of four-thirds. So check if you have it on your paper. You have it? All right. And the last one is the equivalent fraction to 10, 20. The lowest fraction for 10, 20. When you simplify or reduce it, what do you get as the lowest fraction? Don't say the answer yet. Nobody has something in a straight line yet? Straight line? You have a straight line? All right, come to the mic and tell me the fractions you have. Let us see if we have that as well. Quickly. We're going to go right into decimal next and then some past paper questions. Three is. All right, stop right there. What did you get for three eight? Anybody knows? Yes? Which question was that? That was the second seven one. Five. That question was seven eight subtracted by a half. Right, seven eight take away a half. So he's correct. Give him a hand. He's correct. <laughs> So 3, 8 is correct. What else do you have there? Two -thirds. He has 2 thirds. Which answer gave him 2 thirds? Anybody? Yes? 10, 15. Wonderful. And what's the third one you have correct? A half. He has a half. So he reduced 20, 10, and he got a half. So he has 3 in a straight line. Give Joshua a clap. All right. All right, so we have completed our fraction lesson. He also has it? The same ones or a different one? Oh, let me hear that one.
Come to the mic, sir. All right, let me hear what you have. Not hearing. One over two. So you have a half, yes. Three, one over three. A third. Two over three. Okay, wonderful. So the reciprocal for three. What was the answer for that one? What's the reciprocal for three? A third. All right, wonderful. So we have two prizes for those two boys. We're going to move right ahead into the decimal lesson, and then we'll go to the questions right after. All right, so tell me the two parts. Tell me the two parts of a decimal number. It has two parts, one on the left, one on the right. Over this side. A whole number and a decimal number. Oh, wonderful. So which side, before you go, before you go, which side is a whole number? On the left. On the left side. And the decimal numbers are? The right. On the right. Wonderful. So once we understand that about decimal, we have no problem in working out a decimal, a decimal item on your test paper. All right. All right, there we have it. We have the whole number on the left, and we have the decimal on the right. We're not going to spend much time on this. We want to get to the questions. That's what is important for you to understand, and then you'll be able to apply yourself with the questions. All right. What do we call the first place after the point? The? The second place? And the third? All right. We're not going to run through all these here. But what I want you to get is to know the largest and the smallest. So here's my example. I have a nice, long Easter bone. All right? So we have three students. I need three persons to stand. Three quickly. All right, we have a lot. All right, you come here quickly. Come on stage right here quickly. Come, um, tall girl on this side. Come in the front right here. I need a boy. All right, come Joshua on this side. Come in the middle. Come up, come up, come up. So we have three, we have three Easter bun. She get a look at dull knife. Dull knife now works so well. So cut her bone in only 10 pieces. How many pieces? 10. 10 pieces. The boy in the middle now, film knife can I shop? Him cut up film one in 100 pieces. All right, and the last person, guess how much pieces? Oh my, a thousand pieces. And each of them, Gave me one piece. Who oh, mean? Which one mean? Cornelia. Yes? No. You think so? Yes, me. So the, the, the first, hers is in 10 pieces. The boy has, is in how many pieces? 100 pieces. And then, over here, a thousand pieces. She give me one piece. Him give me one piece. She give me one piece. Who mean? Yes? I hear the first one, and I heard the last one. So, him not mean then? It's either Cornelia or? Kaylee. We want to figure it out. Let me say it again. How many pieces do she, does she have? Ten. Ten pieces. And how many pieces over here? 
So she gave me a piece, one piece, you know, and she gave me one piece. Who you think is mean? Yes? I hear. Are we saying this one? All right. My next question is, the piece I got from her, is it bigger or smaller than... So who mean to me then? Yes? The last one. All right, thank you very much. All right, so from that example, which number on the decimal side is the largest? Largest. Don't shout it out. Come to the mic. I chose a girl right here. The largest. The tens. The tens. Is she correct? Yes, miss. Let me hear from you on this side. The smallest. The smallest. The thousandth. The thousandth. Please let me hear the TH. Let me hear you say thousandth. Thousands. Wonderful. Let me ask a question now. How come the toes is the smallest? Because Let me hear from you now. Because yes? Because it's the furthest from being a hole. All right. It's the furthest from being a hole. Wonderful. Clap him. Clap him. All right. Let me hear from someone else. Let me hear from you and then the boy, Joshua. Decimal side, um, the places are different. The places are different on the decimal side. All right, come let me hear from you. The more pieces it, it is cut into, it, the smaller it gets. All right, I like that one. The more pieces it's in, the smaller it gets. Yes? Because it's farther from the decimal point. It is furthest from the decimal point. All right. So that is it to decimal. Once we know the size of each of the places, then we are good. Do we think so? Yes. All right, so we're gonna move right ahead. All right, so we know all our place values. And once we know all the place values, then we have no problem. We can round off decimals. We can also compare them just like we did with the, with, the, with the fractions we were doing earlier. All right, so we're moving right along. Let's go to ordering. Okay, so now we have some numbers here. 154, 541, and 514. How do we know the smallest or the largest number? What do we need to know? There is something very important. It's just one word, or maybe two. We need to know what? Yes, I'm looking for two words. Yes? The? I heard it on this side. Let me hear you say place value. Place value. Place value? All right, so once you know where the number falls on your place value chart, then you'll be able to compare and to order your fractions. All right, and there's a song that I think you might know that will help you to round off your fraction. We won't go to your decimal, sorry, but we won't go through that now. We want to get to the questions. All right, so now here we are. We're going to go straight into techniques and how you can answer multiple choice questions. All right, so I did a survey with some students. Listen carefully. And I asked a couple of students, how do you answer multiple choice questions? How do you do them? 
And here are some answers that I came up with. It's going to come up shortly. Uh, yes, it's right here. Some student says, see if you can read the first one for me. Can you imagine? When you're not so sure, you just choose C. It can go so? Can it go like that? Yes, man, I asked some students and they told me that. If you're not so sure, just choose C. You might be correct. Can we use that method? All right, let's read the second one. Can you imagine? If you're doing a maths paper and you say one long answer, you just choose a one day? Yes? But I asked some students and they gave me these options. You're not so sure, you just choose C. If the answer long, that is the correct answer. It can work like that? Can't work like that. Let's go to the next one. Read the next one for me. I think I like that one. Who like that one? You see? Yes, man. I like that one. Say number three again. Raise your hand if you're guilty of using that method to do your multiple choice question. Yes, man. Say again. All right, arms down. Let me hear you on the microphone. Listen carefully. Miss, most of the time I just can't bother. All right, so I can't bother sometimes. I'm just say what? All right. Let me hear the fourth one. Have you ever seen that on your test paper before? So some student says, just choose all the above. You might be correct. Yes? So can we use that method? Uh, on the microphone. Yes, you can speak. We want to hear you. Persons on, on, online want to hear us too. Let me hear from you, Joshua. Sometimes, miss. Sometimes, miss, and I pick all of the box. Miss, sometimes when I pick all of the above, miss, one of the questions can be wrong, miss. I miss one to pick all of the above, you get everything wrong. Okay, thank you. All right, so we are on to the last thing that they say. What's the last one? Say it again. All right. So these five options here, students, are we supposed to use these to do? Yes? Are you sure? Which one can we use? Which one? All right. When I say okay, you say all right. Okay. So these methods here, students, we are not supposed to use them. We are what? Not supposed to use them. We are not supposed to use them because we know how to work out our maths and get our answers correct. So we're going to move into some ways that you can maneuver your multiple choice questions more effectively than you are currently than the methods you're currently using. Because right now, some students are using some of these, and I don't think it will help you much when you get to your PEP curriculum-based test. All right, you have a question or a point? You can go to the mic. Oh, she's shy. All right, let's move on. All right, so here it says, listen carefully now of what you will be doing or what you're supposed to be doing. It says here to read the questions carefully. You're going to read how? Carefully. The word is? Carefully. So read the question carefully to make sure you do what? Understand. Understand. Importantly. Okay, so you have to understand exactly what the question is asking you to do before you go ahead. It says, as you read, 
underline words like not and always. So there are some words that you will see there. If it's saying to add or to subtract or to divide or to whatever they're asking, just underline the key things in your question. Try to understand the question. So for number one, the main thing there is understanding. Let me hear you say understanding. understanding. Wonderful. Number two, remember these are the things that you should be doing. Not the in mini mini most now, or just to see, or just to the long answer, or all the above. Those are not correct. All right, the second one here. Question? All right, the second thing here is for you to answer your multiple choice question without looking for the answer. For example, you see a question that says, a half plus a half. You can answer the question because you can work it out before you actually look at the options that will be given to you to choose from. Let me hear from you. I saw a hand around here, so you can come to the mic. He has something to say. When I'm doing my test, miss, I just work it out. Exactly. The answer. All right. So, um, what's your name again, sir? Azaria has been practicing number two. He tries to work it out first before he look at the options that are given. And then you can go ahead and match with the option to see if the answer is there. So, when, you, when you're going about your test, your PEP exam curriculum based test, that's what option that you, that's a method that you can use to work out or to calculate whatever you're given to do. All right. Now, option method three. It says here to eliminate. Do you know what eliminate means? One person to the mic. Um, someone from, all right, go ahead, boy. Um, to delete or get rid of. To delete or get rid of. Wonderful. So number three speaks about eliminating. So you're going to go ahead and Im eliminate the wrong answer. The answer is very far. They ask you about a fraction and they're giving you some way of answer. So we can go ahead and eliminate. Number three also speaks about reading over your question because normally there are two answers that are close. Have you ever seen that? Yes. You're doing your maths paper and you find out that two answers are very close. You want to say something? You can go to the mic. Yes, you want to say something from earlier. Don't be shy. We are learning from each other. You can go ahead. Sometimes the, um, when you're doing a mathematics test, the number is just, the answer is just one number off, and you just think that to, you see the, um, the first numbers that you see, you just circle it and you do not check it. All right, so it is always good to recheck. Wonderful. All right, so let's recap a bit. The first method here speaks to what? The first one. What was the main thing in the first method here? Understanding. So the first method speaks about understanding. All right, the second method, it speaks to what? Yes? Go to the mic, um, Joshua. The second option speaks to what? To work out. Work out out so the first one is about understanding the second one is about work out so working out your problem before you actually look at the options that are given i see a hand on this side and i see a hand right here girl can go first Sometimes when you work out your answer and you do not see it, it needs reducing. Okay, very good. 
She's saying, sometimes you're working a problem out and you don't see the answer and the option. And you're wondering, what is wrong? And you work it again and you still don't see your option. What do you need to do to find the answer? Reduce, in other words, simplify. Wonderful. Last hand on this side, the boy over here. And then we're going to go to the other options. If you reduce your answer, you do not see it, and, you, and there's nothing you can reduce the two numbers, you, you just, what answer you get, you just leave it. Okay, but with the curriculum-based test, an answer should be there, right? The answer is always there, most time, right, miss? For the curriculum-based, it's a national exam, and the Ministry of Education, they try to make sure that an option is there, so your answer will be there in most cases. So not like your school exams, they're different. But for the curriculum base, where every student in Jamaica will be doing that exam, they have to make sure that an option is there. So you will find your answer. All right, number three speaks to what? Number three, yes, come to the mic. Number three method speaks to? To eliminate Elimination, get, right, to, to eliminate. To get rid of or, um, to, to, or eliminate it. All right, to get rid of something and then to work from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. So elimination, thank you. All right, let's move on to our question. like to get rid of the least likely answer right wonderful so you're going to eliminate the least likely answer to your problem or to your question all right so now we're on to the fourth method it says answer all questions some person like to leave out something but you are to answer what all answer all questions and importantly don't waste time on something that you might not know. You can always do what? You can always do what? Come back to the question. So put a mark there, and then you go to a next question, and then you come right back, because a next question might be able to help you with, yes, I see a hand right here. When you skip the question you're stuck on, there might be a possibility the answer you're stuck on is about it. Okay, wonderful. So what she's saying is that if you don't understand the question, you can skip it. And then you go to another question, boys. And then when you are working that question, that question might help you with the previous question that you were stuck on. Anybody ever experienced that before? Yes, yes, yes. Right, and if you ever experienced that before. All right, yes, man. Okay, wonderful. All right, arms down. So the fourth method is actually telling you to answer everything, but if you are stuck, you move right ahead and then you come right back to it. It says here, if you don't try, you are guaranteed to get? Zero. To get? Zero. Okay, so you won't get any mark for that question. And we want you to get the maximum mark on your curriculum based test that you have to do in a couple of weeks. All right, the final method here says to do what? What's the first three words? Can you see it? Let's say it, let me hear you again. Again. Raise your hand if you know how to manage your time. Uh-huh. Yes, man, I like that. Not a lot of persons. Sometimes you get one hour. And sometimes when 45 minutes, you don't reach half with the paper yet. Yes? So you need to know how to manage your time. So the first thing you yes. The first thing you do is to check. For example, you have an hour and you have 60 questions. You cannot spend 20 minutes on one question. 
If you have 60 questions on a paper and you have one hour, how much should you spend on one question? I hear at least 30 seconds and I heard one minute. Awesome. So you cannot go on one question for like 20 minutes. If it's two minutes, that's okay because some other questions might take 10 seconds or 30 seconds so you can match up back and balance off yourself. So let me hear you again. What is the fourth method all about? The fourth method? Answering all questions. And the fifth method is speaking about? Managing your time. So let's recap all five. First one. Yes, we don't remember already the first. Yes. The first one is to do what? Understand. understand. So we're going to read carefully. We're going to reread to make sure we understand. Two. We're going to make sure we work it out over and over and on. The third one. Eliminate. Eliminate. And that means to do what? It means to do what? Take out the least, out the least likely answer. Yes. Or delete. All right. And the fourth one. Answer all the questions. And the last one I have here for you is to manage your time wisely. All right. I think we did well. I think we did very well. Clap yourselves. <laughs> All right. So now we are going to be moving on to the curriculum-based exam. We're going to see now how the exam is and if we can work out a few questions that has a fraction and decimal in them. If we have time, we might do some others. So we are looking now at the exam. All right, it's going to come up shortly. So we're going to be looking now at the curriculum-based exam that the Ministry of Education will set for you to do. It makes no sense that you're getting all the A's and B's in class, but on the exam, it's not a good grade. So we are looking from now to see the actual exam paper. So this here is an example. So we're going to go through the questions here. See if you see any there on, there are a few there on fractions. Right, so here we have our first question. And the first problem here, which transit is taken from? Yes? No remember this trans? All right, it's numbers, numbers we have here. And the topic for this question is what? Which topic is this coming from? What do we see? We see a fraction. What's the first fraction there that we see? A half. a half. And we know a half, don't it? All right. So number one says, which problem could the expression below help to solve? Let's read the equation there that is given. Let's read the equation that's given there. A half divided by eight. It looks familiar. Do we think we can work it out? But first, do we understand what they're asking us? They, they're asking us, what is a half divided by eight? Have you ever divided something by eight before? Yes? When you divide, the number gets bigger or smaller? Yes? Is it the same for fractions? Not so sure. 
All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to practice the methods that we just went through. We went through five methods that you must use. Some persons are busy working it out. I want you to understand the problem first. Let's read it again. Again. All right. So now we're going to go through the options to see if we could find the correct answer. Let's read the first one. What is the total feed that two chickens eat if each chicken is given one eight kilogram of feed? Think about it. Do we think that's saying the same thing? Joshua, what is this question saying? Is it saying the same thing? It is saying we're doing what? That two chickens would eat. So this one doesn't match the, um, the problem. Does it match the problem? No, I don't think so either. So which method did we just use? No, which method from the, the five methods that I gave you did we just use just now? Elimination. All right. We also read the problem more than one time. So we're trying to understand it. All right. Which method can we use now to help us to solve it? Yes? Which method can we use? We can? We can work it out. But do they need an answer in this problem here? They need an expression to tell us how we can express. A half divided by eight. Let us read B. How much... Let's read B together. How much milk will each child get if eight children share half liter of milk equally? Think about it. Is this saying the same thing as a half divided by eight? I hear some yes. Let me hear you. Come to the mic. Um, I see a hand around the back. I hear a yes for this one. And we don't read C nor D yet. Let us hear what he has to say. Miss, I think it's the right answer because when you're sharing, you're doing the vision. All right. I heard from one person. Anyone else? Let me read option. Yes, I see a hand right here. Are you saying B is correct? All right, let me hear um, your explanation. The word share is also a word used for division. Okay. All right, thank you for that one. All right, let us move on to C. If each cake requires a half liter of milk, how much milk will be used to make eight cakes? Look at that one. Could that one be correct? Why not? Can not be correct? Yes, I can. Don't want to use a mic. It is saying to multiply instead of dividing. All right, I hear from one person. Look at the last option. It said 16 children are divided into two equal groups. How that sound? Could that be correct? Yes, because here it's saying two groups. All right, so what do we think is a correct answer? A, B, C, or D? E. B, wonderful. Do we think we could have managed a question like this on the exam paper? Yes? How many persons would have chose B for the answer? All right, very few hands. How many would have chose? All right, let me ask a question. Which other option is close to B? Which other one? A, C, or D? A, B. Yes? B. I think D. Why do we say D? Why is D? Let me hear from you. Oh, I still come to you around the back. Yes. Because it said divided. Oh, the word divided is in the sentence. All right. Let me hear from you around the back. Come to the mic, please. All 
We're almost at the end. Some persons are getting restless. Yes? I say because it says two equal groups. Oh, it said two equal groups? So that answer could have been a possible answer for the question. Yes, All yes. right. All right. So our answer is B, so we are all correct. So who answered the question just now? Is it me or it is you all? Who answered the question? I think so. I think you did. All right. Wonderful. Clap yourselves. All right. Question two. And remember, these are from the ministry. So you might see something like this on your curriculum-based exam that you will get in a couple of weeks to do. All right. Look at B. Sammy drew a number line on his paper. Look carefully. Sammy drew a number line on his paper. Look at the number line. E, F, G, H, I, J. Look at the question now. We are trying to understand the question. We are practicing the five methods that we should use to answer our questions effectively. It says, Jack drew a new point, 47% of the dis 45 percent of the distance from E to point J. Between which two letters does the new point lie? So we are trying to find out the answer for this question. So let us see if we can understand the question first. So look at 45 percent. In terms of fraction, give me a fraction that 45 would be close to. Yes, we're thinking now. Give me a fraction that 45% would be close to. We're trying to understand the question. I see, I want some girls now, man. I see the boys are on. Yes? Let me hear from you. Come to the mic. So we're trying to understand the question. No, I need to tell me a fraction. Give me a fraction that you think 45% is close to. A fraction. Just think about it first. All right, let me get um, anybody at the front. Yes, go ahead. She's not ready. We're using the same boys over and over on this side. Anyone on this side? What is 45% close to in terms of fraction? One quarter. A fraction. Which fraction is 45 close to? One because we want to see where on the number line would 45 falls. Go ahead. One quarter. She said a quarter. So do we think 45 is close to a quarter? I hear yes. All right. Let me get a boy now. We want to see which fraction is 45 close to. Which fraction? Yes, give me a proper fraction that 45 would be close to. All right, he's still thinking. Anyone from this side? All right, come around the back here. Boy with his hand up. We're trying to understand the question first before we go right ahead and find the answer. Miss, I will say I... Oh, you're giving me the answer. I don't want the answer yet. I want to know, give me a fraction that 45% is close to. Anyone? All right, what's the highest percent? Oh, I see a hand there. Let me get to you first before I ask the second question. Come. You can come to the mic. We're going to get back to you shortly. All right, in the meantime, what's the highest percent we can get on our exam? Yes? So 100% would be how much? Would be a? Would be a whole. Wonderful. Let me hear from you now. So I want to know 45% is close to which fraction? Yes? A half. A half. You think I'm correct? Yes? Yes? 
Or if you get 45% on your test, are you close to a half? Yes? What would be a half? Exactly. So 45% is close to? A half. Wonderful. So on your number line now, you're going to find the half mark. We see how easy it is? So look and tell me where is the half, the half mark on this number line here. Give me the two letters. On the microphone. Let me hear you on the microphone. Do others want to hear you? G and H. Are we sure? Yes, Miss. Are we sure it is G and H? Yes, Miss. All right, let's look at the options now. Now that we understand the question, we can go to the option. Let us try to use elimination. Which one would we take out? It is far from the answer. That could not be the answer. Yes? F and G? Look at the options. Look at A, look at B, look at C, look at D. Which one could not be correct? Yes? I hear I and J. Why I and J could not be correct, Joshua? It's at the end. Wonderful. So I and J is already out. What about F and G? Could F and G be correct? All right. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer is? G and H would be our correct answer. Are we clear with this one? All right. Who answered the question? Is me or you? No. All right. So you all answered the question and got it correct. And that's wonderful. Clap yourselves again. Clap yourselves. All right. We're going to find one more. One more. Yes, it's right here. Number four. Number four. Yes, look at this one. Look at this one. Also another fraction. Let's read together. To clean a tank. Not hearing you. How many liters of disinfectant are needed for 40 liters of water? Think about it. Don't speak it. Don't speak it. Let me see if you can work this one on your own. So I'm giving you two minutes. Let me read for you again. To clean a tank, three quarter liter of disinfectant is needed for every four liters of water. How many liters of disinfectant are needed for 40 liters of water? Yes? So we're going to try to work this one out. Yes, some persons are working. Some persons are working. All right, we're almost done. Some persons are working. All right. Giving you one minute to work that one out. It's mathematics time. It's mathematics time. Let's work the maths out. It's mathematics time. All right, some person working. All right. Some person look like they are ready for the curriculum based test. They are ready. And already I'm seeing some hands up. They figured it out already. Let us see if we can understand the question together. For every four liters of water, how many disinfectants we're going to need? Three we're going to need three quarters. So if we have eight liters of water, how many we're going to need? Yes? How many we're going to need if we have eight 
liters of water. How many disinfectants we're gonna need? Yes? I hear six quarters. All right. So what if we want um, 12 liters of water? How many disinfectants we're gonna need? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. All right. What do we think is the correct answer? Or before we go there, what can we eliminate? What can we take out? The answer is very far. That could not be the answer. Which one? I'm hearing C. B could, 15 holes, that could not be the answer. I'm hearing all different things. All right, raise your hand if you say A. A is very far, A is not correct. All right, B is not correct. All right. And what about C? Could C be a correct answer? Yes. Could C be a possible answer? Yes. All right, I need to get the correct answer now. So raise hand if you say A is the correct answer. All right, if you think B is a correct answer, All right, I need someone to come to the mic to tell me how. All right, the boys are ready. Wait, boys, are there any girls before we take the boys? Are there any girl? We don't have a girl. All right, we have the boys. They are ready for the curriculum based exam. Let me get who wants to start. All right, Azaria. Joshua, sorry. Joshua, please go right ahead, Joshua. Let me hear what Joshua is saying about the problem. Listen carefully, we're almost done. Go ahead, Joshua. I think that A is the answer, miss, because... You because said A? I, yes, miss. Yes. I think that A is the answer, miss, because I did my calculation, miss, and I checked it over. How did you do that, Joshua? First, miss, first, miss what I did was that I did just... I just added... Three, four, ten times, and then I got... Oh, hold on a second. You had three quarters ten times? Yes, miss. So where did ten come from? Miss, excuse me. Where you. did the ten come from? Excuse me, miss. Wait a bit, Joshua. I need someone else to tell me where the ten came from. Who wants to tell me that? All right, come, let me hear from you, and then I'll come back to you, Joshua. Step aside. Where did that ten come from? Because there's no ten in this problem. How did we get 10? Miss, so if three quarters equals, can clean four liters of water, four into 40 goes 10 times. Then I multiplied three fourths times 10. Okay, wonderful. Give him a clap, give him a clap. <laughs> All right, Joshua, you can come back now. So Joshua said that he added three quarters 10 times. When you add three quarters ten times, ten times, what did you get? Miss, I got 30 over four. You got? 30 over four. 30 quarters, yes. And what did you do next? Um, stop for a moment. You the got 30 and 34. Is the answer there? So what did someone say earlier that we can do? We can reduce. So go ahead, Joshua. After, I read that a 30 can go into four, four times. So then I did look back at my timetable and I read that it can go into four, seven times. Okay. So I did write the seven as my whole number. Seven as your whole number. And the remainder two as the numerator and... 
Yeah, they just put back the denominator. Right, so two fourths, when you simplify two, two fourths, you get? Uh -huh. Aha. Aha. So the correct answer is? A. A, which is seven and? Aha. Are we clear with that one? Yes. Raise your hand who would have gotten that correct if you were in an exam. Raise your hand. Would it be correct in your exam? All right, so we need some more practice. At the front right here, would it be correct for you? Not so sure. All right, so we need some more practice. Do we need to go over it again, or we are clear? If you're clear, say clear. clear. Wonderful. All right, we're going to move to one more question from the curriculum-based exam. One more fraction question. Number five. The number five is a fraction question. Yes, it is. All right. So look at this one now. We are just checking to see if we have mastered the fraction content of our lessons because that's what the curriculum base is all about. Mastering the content that you are taught to see how you can maneuver your questions in the exam. This one says, look at the table carefully. Yes, look at the question carefully. We want to see if we can get this one correct. And this is our last question. All right, let us read together. This table shows the number of kilometers four friends travel to get to school. Look at the question carefully. The first one is Andy. And what's the distance for Andy? One and three eight. Look at Helen. What's her distance? One, two, three. Look at Michelle. What's her distance? One, five, nine, nine. And Troy? One, four, nine. One and four nine. Look at them carefully. Look at them carefully. Look at the fractions. Already I see some hands over there. But before you give me the answer, I want to do elimination again. Which answer could not be correct? Which answer? Andy, Ellen, Michelle, or Troy? Who is out? Helen is out. Yes, we think so? Oh, we said Troy. I don't want the correct answer yet. I want you to tell me which answer is out. Which answer is not correct? The answer is very far. Troy. I'm hearing Troy. One more answer is very far. So we can eliminate two. Yes. Which two? Yes. Troy and? Yes. Troy. Andy and Troy. So Andy and Troy could not be correct. Yes? All right, before we start, can somebody tell me, could we find the LCD or the LCM of all those numbers? Yes. No? no? All right, what we're trying to find out is the person who lives the nearest or the furthest. What are we trying to find out? Who lives the nearest to school or the furthest from school? Let us try to understand first. Yes? Who lives the? The furthest. So who is that person who lives the furthest? Troy. We're saying Troy? Are we saying Troy lives the furthest from school? So he travels the greatest distance? All right, we're changing answers now. Michelle? All right, let's look at Michelle and... Troy, who has the greatest distance there? Michelle. Yes? Michelle. Where are saying Michelle? Yes. So that means that it, the answer could not be Troy. 
Look at the other two answers now. Look at Andy and look at Helen. What could we say the answer is for those two? Which one live the furthest? I'm hearing Ellen. All right, raise your hand if you're saying and live the furthest. All right, what we're going to do then is to find the LCM for the first two fractions quickly. Let us see how quickly we can do that. We have eight and we have three as our denominator. Quickly, what's our LCM? The LCM for those two? 24. 24. All right, how many eights? Give us 24 quickly. Three. Yes, three. So we're going to multiply our numerator by three. What would we get for the three eights? Three times three? Nine. Nine. And for the other fraction, which is uh, two thirds, how many threes in eights? No, I made a mistake. How many three is in 24? I gave you the answer. Yes? Eight. So multiply eight by? No, we are the second one now. We're at two thirds. Eight times two. What is eight times two? Sixteen. So which one of those fractions are, which one is the biggest one? Which one is the biggest one? Yes? We're working out Andy and Helen. Raise your hand if you're saying Helen. And raise your hand if you're saying Andy. All right, we're still not sure on this one. We are still not sure on this one. So this problem is going to be your homework. You're going to see if you can work this one out. I want to challenge you to work this one out and be able to find the answer. All right, so we're going to be finishing off now. But to recap, I want you to give me the five methods that you must not do in your curriculum based exam. We're using the mics now. You can just go behind the mic, five persons. I need the five ways in which. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Wonderful. We must not use eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Next one. All of the above. Don't use all of the above. None of the above. Don't use none of the above. Ali. Longest answer is the not longest always. answer. Don't use that one. Don't ever choose C. And don't ever choose C because you're not so sure you're in dope. Don't choose C. Give yourselves a clap. Give yourselves a clap. <laughs> All right. And finally, five students go behind the mic. Tell me the methods now that you are going to use to do your curriculum based exam. Five persons line up nicely. Five? All right, I have five boys. Okay, let us hear them. The first one. Cross out the least possible answer. Cross out the least possible answer. Understand. Try to understand the problem. Wonderful. Try to work it out. Try to work it out before you even look at the options. Eliminating. Eliminating, all right. Yes? All right, he's thinking. Manage your time. Manage your time. Wonderful. Did we get all of them? I think we did well, but one was left because we had a repetition. Anybody remember? Yes? Answer all questions. You did well. Clap yourselves. Clap yourselves. Clap yourselves. All right. So we have, we have reached now the end of our presentation. Let me see if you can sing the math song, even though we're closing, if you remember it. No, the math song. Come and join, come and join. Problem solving. Uh, uh, 
one more time, one more time. Oh, it's mass time. Oh, it's mass time. Come and join. Come and join. Critical thinking, problem solving. I love them all. I love them all. All right, wonderful. All those who participate, you're going to get a nice maths sticker. All right, and that's the end. Thank you so much for listening and participating. Boys and girls, give Miss Saskilly another round of applause. Okay, and as we close, I'd like to say thank you to you, the students. Give yourselves a clap. Another rowdy applause. Come on, let me hear your clap. <laughs> okay, we could not have done this pep lecture without you. Thank you to Saskia Lee again for doing such an exceptional presentation here at PEP 2020-24, sorry, 2024. Her insights, her expertise made a significant impact and we're grateful for her valuable contribution. Thank you again for sharing your knowledge, Miss Lee, and making our event a success. Thank you to the teachers who are here today from Harborview Primary School. Again, I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Jeremy Lee Nelson, who came from the Jamaica Information Service. He actually left, but you saw him this morning. Thank you to Mr. Jamie Lee Nelson again. Thank you to Grace Kennedy, who's one of the sponsors for a PEP lecture this year. Right, we could not have done, that, done it without them. Thank you to our education officer, Ms. Alexis McDavid, the auxiliary staff, our administrative staff, our PR department, and of course, Mr. Richard Belto, who's over there, give him a clap, guys. He's the one taking all the wonderful photographs. And Adelka Wisdom from our um, PR department. Thank you all for being here. I know we had a late start, but we made it happen. Uh, we had some other schools who were coming, but you know, on this given day, anything can happen. But we thank you, Harborview Primary School, for being here today, and we could not have done it without you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And before we close, I'm gonna invite Alexis on stage to make a presentation to Saskia for her wonderful presentation. I thought that was very in depth and her tips were just excellent. So come up on stage, Saskia. Give her a clap again. Yeah, I'm doing one first with...